it has arrived. The long anticipated return of glory to kickboxing's mecca, the Netherlands for Glory 78 from the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam. Welcome to the Glory 78 preview show. I'm your host, Todd Grisham. It's been seven months seen since we've last held a live Glory event, back in January at Glory 77. There, Rico Verhoeven won a heavyweight contender tournament and Alex Pereira the light heavyweight title in a controversial split decision over Artem Vahitov. More on that coming up later. Glory 78, though, is stacking up as one of Glory's greatest fight nights ever. We start with the Glory Super Fight Series, where two title bouts will be on the line. We open with two lightweight bouts. Mohamed Hindouf takes on Manuel Robson Minoto, followed by Israel's Ite Gershon versus Garrick Belay of France. Then two highly anticipated title bouts. Tajani Bestati taking on Elvis Gashi of the United States for the lightweight title. Then it's Yusri Belgarwi versus Donovan Visa for the middleweight crown. That will be followed by seven fights, including a rematch for the light heavyweight title and the return of Badr Hari. And that's followed by heavyweight action with Nordin Mehedin versus Raul Cantinas, making his glory debut. Then another contender bout, this time in the light heavyweight division, as second-ranked Luis Tavares battles Felipe Micheletti. Then two more heavyweight bouts, with Levy Richters taking on Tomas Mosny, followed by Tariq Kababez versus Antonio Plazapot. The co-main event is a rematch from Glory 77, when Alex Pereira won a controversial split decision over then-champ Artem Vahitov. This fight is sure to have fireworks and is the most anticipated Glory light heavyweight title fight of all time. And finally, the main event, featuring the return of Badr Hari, who's looking to get back to his old form that made him a K-1 champion and a knockout machine. He takes on an underdog that's not to be overlooked, the big, strong Polish Broshek. Today, Glory is excited to announce its launch of a new streaming platform now available at GloryFights.com. Glory fans around the world will now be able to watch live pay-per-view events via the new streaming platform, starting with Glory 78 on September 4th. Fans must purchase the Glory 78 pay-per-view at GloryFights.com. It's the only place they can buy it globally. The Glory 78 Super Fight Series will be available for free on GloryFights.com. On the Glory 78 preview show, we'll preview all three of the upcoming title fights. Mark Schaaf sits down with both Badr Hari and Broshek. And I'll be joined by my broadcast partner, Bazooka Joe, Joseph Baltellini. Up next, we'll preview the battle for the lightweight championship and a rematch, this time for the middleweight championship of the world. Welcome back to the Glory 78 Preview Show. I'm Todd Grisham. The Glory Super Fight Series will feature two world title fights. The first in the lightweight division between second ranked Tajani Bestati and third ranked Elvis Gashi. They hold a combined overall record of 42 and five. The middleweight title fight that follows is number one ranked Donovan Visa taking on second ranked Ustri Belgari. Their combined record is 47 and seven and they fought once before with Visa winning by unanimous decision back at Glory 65. Five rounds for the lightweight championship of the world. Stijani, the wonder boy, Bestati. Best time. 
a lot to get another chance at the belt. I'm hungry and I can't wait. You know, I appreciate it that I can fight again for the world title and to become uh, one of the youngest world champions in glory history. And uh, of course, to be the first uh, Moroccan as well to become a champion in glory kickboxing. Since my last fight, you know, it was a great learning experience. I fought against Marat and, uh, you know, I learned a lot in that fight. We are now almost one and a half, two years ahead of that. I'm more mature now. I'm a more mature fighter. I made some changes in my team. I'm ready and I'm hungry. I find the passion, the passion in kickboxing again. And uh, when I'm passionate about something, I'm very dangerous, I can tell. Yeah, that speed on the end. And I'm still not done in kickboxing, you know? So I have a lot to fight for, and I want to become a world champion in kickboxing. If I want to become a champion, I have to do everything for it. We're just working on the details, and like my trainer always say, the details matters. Fighting tonight out of Morocco. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Tijani. The Wonder Boy, Bastani! Well, Elfred Gashi is a strong fighter, a fighter with power, but I'm also uh, powerful and I'm also strong, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about my opponent, but it's about me. I, I have to believe in me, I have to believe in myself. I feel I can knock everybody out. Everything is how I want it to be, so uh, no excuses, no nothing. I'm going in to fight hard and, and, and to make a show. Everything is about the win, no matter how. He has twice been on the doorstep of a world title and begins that climb again tonight. Here is Yusri Belgari. I think that's a good fight to uh, to portray the road I was on. Everything is a bit better, but we're talking percentages, you know, in this game, and everything is about mindset. My mindset has changed a lot. MMA hardened me mentally. I feel stronger standing, standing also, yeah. Because you stand up being tired and you still have to perform, that will translate into kickboxing but also just mentally being in these awkward situations and fighting yourself out of it. Make you strong, make you strong, yeah. Take yourself at all times, Bama commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Yeah, we fought one time, uh, 2019. Um, I lost the fight. There is that punch low kick from Visa. Oh! oh! High kick from Donovan Visa out of nowhere! And Bill Gorey I made a mistake. Um, and now we're gonna run it all back. And we have five rounds. Uh, title fight. I think we're the top contenders of the middleweight right now because it's a vacant title. So we have to show the fans that we belong there in this title fight. I will give my everything. Winning means everything for me. At Glory 77, the long-awaited matchup between then champion Artem Vahitov and interim champion Alex Pereira finally took place. Vahitov was determined to prove he was the undisputed light heavyweight champion, while Pereira was looking to become Glory's first ever simultaneous two division champ, already holding the belt as middleweight title holder. And we pick it up at round four. To protect the hand or anything, so he looks like he's back. We are now in the championship rounds. Big high kick. 
And my unofficial <laughs> card, I have Vahitov just slightly ahead here. The last time Alex Pereira went past three rounds was back in June of 2016. He won by a fourth round knockout against Junior Alpha. So Vahitov always seems to go five rounds, at least recently. So let's see if Pereira's power can hold up in the late stages. We are in the championship rounds in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. We're watching Corey 77. This to unify the light heavyweight title. Pereira, the interim champion. Vahitov, the world champ. You see there, Pereira hey. throw a hard Sabic. left hook off the guard of Vahitov. Vahitov had to exit a little bit because there's that much power. He resets even after blocking sometimes. Another good flurry there for Bart Vahitov. Yep. And he did it as a counter and a combination, which is nice. He's countering in combinations. And downstairs for that lead leg. He hasn't focused on that as much as you thought he might. Yeah, he, he, he mixes it in here and there. There it is again. Yep. He does it, but it hasn't been a consistent attack. He's maybe using that low kick more to set up his hands rather than to finish the leg itself. Pereira throwing twice as many strikes. If I told you that before this fight began, you'd think, oh, Pereira's killing this guy. But yeah. it's close. Yeah, very close. And there hasn't been those big damaging shots to sway the fight one way or another. Well, all it takes is one from Pereira. There are the knees, switch knee for the Brazilian. Goes up high again. Yep. We haven't seen Pereira throw those in the last two rounds. Oh, and again, and that forced Vahitov to exchange, and that's what he does. <laughs> Put everything he had in that left hook. His money punch. <laughs> This, this round is the closest one of them all, I think. Oh, and Vahitov got the better of that exchange. Ooh. Pereira lifted that knee. This is a bit of a chess match. And look at Vahitov. A couple of Stop. power punches Stop. right before the bell rings. Could that sway some of the judges? Yep, that's what I'm thinking, you know? The last little attack. Stop. It needed something in that moment. But very close. Fifth and final round. It could all come down to this championship round. Pereira, the interim champ. Vaitov looking to hold the gold around his waist. Hasn't lost in six years. It looks like the right hand, though, is holding up for Vahitov. I mean, like I said, it's last oh, fight. Oh, hand right again for the Russian. And he got him again. Can you imagine if Vahitov is able to knock out Pereira? With the injured hand. I mean, the way he's rolling off. Just good power from Vahitov. Nice. I'm wondering if Pereira thinks he's way ahead. For all we know, he might need a knockdown himself. Stop! Oh, Come on up, Red. Can't be doing that, Hart. Hey! Under hey. two minutes to hey. go, what has been an extremely close contest between two of the best in glory. The problem is, too, like we see Vahitov hey. coming forward. No so clinching. You kind of sometimes get that the advantage, but Pereira moving backwards is still doing really good. He's active, he's punching, mixing knees, still chopping away. So we might see Pereira moving backwards a little bit, but he's still striking and landing well. Not a lot of power behind those punches. Vahitov fighting like he needs this round. It's the big. Stop. I like the movement though for Vahitov in round five. Yeah. Still seems a bit fresh. I mean, 
and I, I just like that little Break. head movement, Break. strong defense, him coming forward, blocking the shots, countering. But I think this is a better round for Pereira. I mean, he's coming forward, he's a bit more active, putting the combinations, minus him eating those two big hands. I mean, but those are the going. ones that will, you'll remember when yeah, the round ends. It's damage, right? It's damage. Those big right hands from Vahitov was the best thing in this round. Especially when fight. Pereira keeps his hands down and just you see his chin snapping side to side. But a lot of that chin turn is the way of taking the power away from the punch. That's what you mean by like rolling with that punch, right? They still land very powerful. That low kick is nice. <laughs> Looks like we got a cut over the left eye of Vahi Top. Those scissor knees. And that will do it. It's anybody's guess. Who is the Glory Light Heavyweight Champion? I mean, you gotta think this is such a high level fight where one little mistake can cost you your world title. So you see both gentlemen being very defensive, very good with their counter shots, and really masters at understanding range and distance control. It seemed like Vahitov's plan was to come forward, pressure, throw some good combinations, where Pereira was fighting off the back a little bit, moving backwards, mixing his jabs, kind of trying to set up those big power shots. So, I mean, could it have been that forward pressure of Vahitov that the judges saw? Or is it that backwards fighting, the bigger power shots from Pereira? Those knees that we saw, those scissor knees up the middle. <laughs> Both gentlemen had good moments, whether it's with knees or overhands. In this fifth round, you saw Vahitov rip the body, then go with those overhand rights. It seemed like that was Vahitov's best punch. They're just behind the ear. It's good to see Vahitov healthy yes. after a five-round fight. It seems that that hand held up under the pressure as we look at strikes by round. Obviously, this is subjective, Joe, yeah. but it's hard to argue with what Pereira was able to do. I mean, they're not that much difference. Round four is about three strikes. Round five, three strikes, so very close. Here's your strike count. Overall, 107 to 153 for Vahitov, 144, 292 for Pereira. How did the judges see it? Let's find out. And the winner by split decision, and new Glory Light Heavyweight Champion of the World, Alex Poton Pereira. Artem Vaitov has the look of what happened. Yeah, he does not, he did not expect that result. And to break down that light heavyweight battle, here he is, Joseph Baltellini, my broadcast colleague. I've barely seen you, my friend. How you doing in Canada? Well, I'm excited now. We've been in a lot of lockdowns here, but we're open. Things are getting busy here at Bazooka Kickboxing. And let me tell you, talking to you is one of the things I miss the most. Oh, I'm sure. Thanks for the lie, Joe, but it still felt great. Let's talk about this great matchup. It is a rematch, an extremely close battle. Vahitov's team was furious at the decision. Pereira felt he won. When you heard they were rerunning it back, what did you think? Well, I thought it was the perfect move to do. I mean, watching that fight live, it was really close. So, you know, I had to go rewatch it. Because watching it live, I felt like Vahitov was doing enough to get the decision. But watching it back, it really made me realize how close this fight was. So, yeah, running it back was the right thing to do. All right, pretend you're trainers for both Vahitov and Pereira. In this camp, what are you working on with Pereira, the reigning champion, to do better in the rematch? Well, I thought Pereira did well when he was active. And the, his strategy basically going into that first fight was a lot of good volume punches, looking for his counters, and trying to find a lot of good knees up the middle. And it was successful, I found, earlier on in the fight. But with Vahitov, it was the pressure that did well. When he was going forward, when he was putting his combinations together, I think that's when he started winning the fight a little bit more. So they know each other now, they know the power, they know their counter tendencies. So I think this one's gonna be, you know, potentially even closer than the first ones. Cause I think anytime these guys fight, it's gonna be that close. You know, Pereira was used to killing guys coming into this fight. And for once someone stood there, took his best shots and put it back on him. Is Pereira gonna be a little more cautious this time, expecting this one to go five rounds as opposed to maybe getting a guy out early? 
Well, I think so. And, and I think when you watch Pereira, his style is very energy efficient. So what that means is he doesn't always throw with power, but when he does find that counter, his timing is so good. He catches you when you don't expect it. And that's kind of why he puts you out. It's not like big power forced energy. It's smooth, it's controlled, it's relaxed, and it's the timing that makes him so dangerous. And we've seen that left hook that we call all the time the touch of death. But when you fight someone who's so defensively sound like Artem Vahitov, it's not so easy to land those big shots. And hey, if you've been looking at Vahitov's Instagram, all of a sudden he's got a six pack for the first time in his life. So look out, that Russian bear is hungry for his world title. Joe, hang in there. We got another segment coming up for you as we break down Glory 78. When we return, a man who's anxiously awaiting a title shot of his own and another looking to pull off Glory's greatest ever upset. While the much anticipated light heavyweight title rematch between Pereira and Vahitov will take place at Glory 78, there is another one we should keep an eye on. Luis Tavares, with 63 career wins, 22 coming by knockout, feels it's his time for a title shot, and he doesn't hide the fact that he's anxiously awaiting the winner. I want to become champion. I've been screaming at the, at the top of my lungs for, uh, for like a year now. I'm close, uh, I'm one fight away. A big, big fight in the light heavyweight division. Tavares. Yep, Tavares. That good left hand, and that buckles Michelechi. Very fit right hand connects there for Tavares. Felipe Michelechi. So a bit of a surprise as the White Tiger wins by split decision. We fought, we fought each other at uh, Glory 66. I thought I won the fight, but it wasn't my best performance too, so I just went back to the drawing board and uh, I corrected uh, all my mistakes. Oh, a couple nasty uppercuts. For your winner, Luis Tavares. I was supposed to fight Muscle Boy. If he got injured, oh, well, things happen. But uh, now it's like a fairy tale, you know. I can get close to the title by avenging a loss. Fighting out of Rotterdam, the Netherlands, here is the infamous Luis Tavares. Well, in the last two years, I have grown as a fighter completely. Uh, I'm in good spirits. Uh, the training camp has been going tremendous. He's a very complete fighter. He likes to bulldoze uh, opponents. He likes to use his hands, his kicks. But I think um, he's not that good fighting backwards on his back foot. Abena is a fighter that, that uh, kind of rubs you the wrong way, you know. <laughs> we don't like each other, it's, it's known. I don't feel the same um, animosity towards uh, Micheletti. More so that, yeah, he has a victory over me, and uh, I want to correct that. But uh, I've been seeing him on Instagram. He's a, he's a top athlete. He's a uh, polite guy, you know, he's a family man. So there's nothing to hate about that because I'm the same, I'm the same kind of person. Other than that, though, it's still a fight. So uh, when the bell rings, all those things are out the window, and I will, and I will be there to win. As the second ranked light heavyweight, a win at Glory 78 should ensure him a title opportunity against the winner of Pereira and Bahita. Well, seventh ranked heavyweight, the high tower of Rochek from Poland, may have only 12 career wins, but seven of those have come by knockout. But this, of course, is by far his toughest challenge ever in his short career as he goes up against the living legend in Badr Hari. Recently, Mark Schaaf had a chance to sit down with the big fella. 
Okay, Arkadius, you are going to fight Bader Hari on Glory 78. This is obviously one of the biggest fights in your career. How do you approach your fight against a legend? You know, I think this fight uh, will be will be bigger. It's gonna be bigger than uh, any other fight in my future. You know, maybe even a fight with Rico for a belt uh, won't be bigger for me. For me, this is the biggest fight. Uh, can I imagine? Is it uh, difficult to fight against somebody whom you sort of look up to? But then again, in the ring, it's war. No. You have to beat him. I don't think uh, it will be difficult because you know I don't have pressure. Maybe he 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 has he feel pressure. I think because he's Bader Hari. I'm I'm normal guy from Warsaw. Uh, I'm not superstar, so he have to win. He, he must win. Uh, he don't think about lose. Uh, but for me, man, I I will go. I'm gonna uh, go to the ring. Uh, I will try to knock him out. And that's it. Do you think he underestimates you? Underestimate. Do you think he thinks lightly of you? Uh, I hope no. I hope no. I I told him uh, two minutes uh, ago. Uh, treat me seriously. Because I want to fight with uh, the best, uh, uh, the best brother Harry. You know, I want. I uh, I think uh, he will. He will treat me seriously. Uh, he will uh, try to knock me out in the first round. And, but you know, I'm a warrior. I I I I, I won't. Uh, I. You know what I mean. Yeah. He, he won't. He won't <laughs> knock me out. Yeah. What does this fight mean in Poland to in your Poland. Pol uh, Polish uh, fans? In Polish kickboxing, I think is this is the biggest fight, and especially for my friends, for uh, Legia supporters, uh, they are really looking forward for it. Uh, I think they, I know they will come. Uh, the hundred of them will come here. Uh, our friends from Den Haag will come. Uh, they are really excited. Are you the one who's going to close the Bar Hari book? If I win. And I will. Yes, I think uh, he should uh, stop his career. Uh, and you know, fight uh, with Badr Hari is uh, the biggest, my biggest dream. But uh, finished his uh, legend. Oh man, it will it will be the best things. I think. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. When we come back, whether you know him as the Bad Boy or the Golden Boy, Badr Hari returns. You know, I fought a lot of tough guys. I fought Sammy Shield. He's like the father of all fathers. Unbeatable. I knocked him out in a minute. So I've seen strong guys. I fought Alistair Overeem. This guy is amazing. So strong. I knocked him out. I fought Ray Seffo. This guy is a legend as a chin of steel. I knocked him out. When I win, a lot of things will change in the heavyweight division. Like I said, I want eternal glory. I want people to talk about me even when I'm gone. Welcome back to the Glory 78 Preview Show. I'm Todd Grisham. The return of Fodder Hari to the Glory Ring is one of much anticipation. He'll admittingly tell you he's had a rough go of it lately with a loss to Benjamin Adekui at Glory 76 and the untimely injury after knocking down Rico Verhoeven twice at Collision 2. He makes no apologies or excuses, but come Glory 78, he has a determination and a desire to regain the legendary status he feels is rightfully his. As Mark Shaw found out when he sat down with Bader Hart. Bader, we're very glad to have you back at Glory 78. You're going to fight Arkadius Rojek. How do you feel? No, I feel good. I feel good, you know, after this big change in my career and in my training, training team, trainer, sparring partners, a lot of things changed. So yeah, I feel very comfortable and also very uncomfortable because a lot of things changed but I think it was the best uh, move for me to make uh, at this point of my career. Yeah, you lost against Benny. Did that set things in motion? No, it was already there for because, you know, I left Mike a, li a couple of months when I fought, I think, Rico for the first time, I think, or the second. Yeah, it was I, the second. I, it was yeah. it the second, yeah. yeah so I, I left him then, and then I already was battling this, this, this choice that I wanted to make. Uh, 
I think the fight with Benny was really the last push I needed to see that things had to uh, change and, 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 and handle, handle differently. So, How did you recover from that loss? Because you broke your nose, I guess? And yeah. Yeah, I, I recovered very well. I was, you know what it is? I, I, I don't see a loss as, as some, it's just something for that moment. You know, it's, it doesn't tell you something about somebody, his career or how, we, how his career will go after that, after that fight, you know. And I'm not a guy who lost for the first time, so you have a lot of fighters that are doing well and they're doing good and they're unbeatable for a couple of years and then they lose and they lose again and it's, it's over, you know. I, I recovered from losses a couple of times and, and, every, and everybody knows how I come back from a loss. And so I, 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 it, it, didn't, it didn't bother me for a long time, you know. It only set me on fire to work harder and, 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 and be smarter, you know, in everything. Yeah, and now you're working with uh, Said for, I think, half a year or so. What changed? Uh, the mindset. The mindset changed. I think this is the most important thing, uh, is that we really looking the same direction. You know, he's really motivated and he's really uh, looking forward in improving himself, not only to me, but also to all the fans, fight fans, and to show them that, that Badr is really the, the, the name that he is, you know, still is and will be. So it's really the mindset that changed everything. Yeah, how is your mindset right now? Because you look really calm and collective. Even in the press conference, you were calm. You're yeah, in control. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm really prepared. You know, we, we are working really with a good game plan, and this is something that I missed for a long time uh, with, with my old coach, you know, with Mike. We, we, we became too comfortable, and we stopped uh, working tactically on a lot of fights. We just went in there with the idea we are good, so we'll be good enough. And uh, good enough doesn't make it anymore. You know, if you fight guys who are there, and we'll do everything to beat you. You have to be very, very keen with your plan. You have to have a good, good strategic plan. You have to be very tactical. You have to be, you work on your technical things because that, that what you don't give water will die somewhere in time, you know? So, and that is what happened. But all is different now. You know, we work hard, we have a plan. We have a goal, we have a common goal, we have a common plan and he really brings back the best in me. So I'm, I'm really thankful to work with him and, I'm, and I'm, I'm really enjoying my sports again. How much pressure is there on this fight? Because, you know, the public thinks you have to win. Because you, if you no, lose... But, but, I, but I have to win. As simple as that. Does it give you a lot of pressure? No, 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 because I have to win. You know, it's, it's better for me to give me no option because there is no option. <laughs> So it makes it, it, it makes me, it's less pressure, you know? Mm -hmm. The pressure comes when you have a lot of possibilities and a lot of things to think about. Then you're like, okay, maybe if, if, if. No, there is no if. I have to win and that's it. We work hard. We put everything online. We do everything that we can. So uh, the outcome should be winning. And this is the only outcome that, that, that will be. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Thank and you. good luck on the yes. fourth. We'll see you. Yes, thank you. And now I welcome back in my broadcast colleague, Joseph Baltolini, the former glory welterweight champion of the world. I didn't say that earlier, Joe. Sorry for the disrespect. Mm. Let's talk about Badahari. He looks like he's in incredible shape as well as he gets set to take on that big Polish fighter in Broszek. What kind of fight are we going to see at Glory 78? Well, I think based on the press conference, we saw a little humble Bader. This is a Bader Hari that can be very dangerous. And he found this new love for the sport, this new passion for training again. That's going to really show in this fight, but the humbleness of Bader is going to play heavily in his favor. Don't know if I've ever heard the word humble and Bader in the same sentence. That's not his style, but on paper, this is a very winnable fight for Bader Hari, but his fans don't just want to see him win. They want violent knockouts. How much pressure is there on Botter to perform at Glory 78? Well, I think there's a huge pressure on Botter. I mean, him coming back with Glory kickboxing, he's had huge fights with Rico. 
now added Bui. He's fought Gerges, so this is a fight that people expect him to win and do well. But for me, it's Botter that's got to go in and be a little bit patient, set up those big knockouts. I mean, every fight you watch, Botter's first round is wild. For people who fight him, they try to bring Botter in the deeper waters into that second and third round. So expect Botter to go crazy and, and you know very energetic in that first round. But I think it's crazy to say this about Botter, but this new team is going to bring back that real big technical side from Botter. Because the state of the glory heavyweight division right now is incredible. Benjamin Adigbui, as you mentioned, Jamal Ben Sadiq is coming back. Of course, Rico Verhoeven, the greatest heavyweight in glory history, and the recent signing, Alistair Overeem. Where does Botter Hari fit right now in the heavyweight picture? Botter has to really put on some good performances to crack, you know, those two shots again. And I think, I know even a fight with Overeem would be perfect. They fought two times in the past. They're both exciting fights. So potentially, you know, a, a Botter Overeem fight would be fantastic. Yeah, but first things first, it's Botter Hari versus Roshek at Glory 78. Joe, I can't wait to call it with you. I'll see you over in the Netherlands. Stick around. When we return, Bazooka Joe and I talk more about Alistair Overeem and his next opponent. The king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. member of the glory roster if it's up to me i would go for the title so that's Nico. alistair you know he, he's been there in the k1 days but these are the glory days and i'm the glory king if i see him in the streets we fight 100 times i will miss him up 100 times alistair if you want something come to glory and we welcome back in Joseph Baltolini. It's coming at the Helodome, October 23rd. Just announced Alistair Overeem versus Rico Verhoeven for the Glory Heavyweight Championship. Your thoughts, Joe? And you got to think, Alistair's bringing in one of the most decorated sports athletes. I mean, he's got almost world titles in every big kickboxing and MMA organization. So that's why it makes it so exciting for his return. Some of his fights he's had in the past, you know, he's fought Rebin Bonyaski, he's fought Peter Ertz twice, he's fought Golkan Saki. So that's someone who's fought the highest level, you know, before transitioning to MMA. So when you talk about right now, the big Biggest names in kickboxing, it's Botter, Rico, you know, Alistair Overeem now, and guys like Benjamin Attic Boy putting their name in the mix. So to put him against our heavyweight champion is the perfect fight. Massive for all combat sports fans. Yeah, but he's been dialed in with MMA for about a decade, Joe. Now he comes back to kickboxing, and you're facing the heavyweight champion of the world. What does he need to do right now to get ready for that fight? Well, he needs to get back into the bigger gloves. I mean, one of the things that you realize with mixed martial arts is the small glove, it changes defense and it changes range. So he's got to understand, you know, the differences again. I think it's like riding a bike for over him. He's done it so much in the past, you know, he grew up with kickboxing. So I think it's just going to be something where once he gets back in the gym, he gets his regular sparring, he's going to pick it up just where he left off. Well, Joe, fans around the world, especially in Holland, have been clamoring for Alistair Overeem to get back into kickboxing, especially Rico Verhoeven. He's mentioned fighting Overeem, and he gets the chance October 23rd. What would your advice be to Rico as he faces a man making the switch from MMA back to kickboxing? Well, for Rico, just keep doing you. And I think that's what the, his biggest success is. He's not trying to change things. He sticks to his strong basics. He's got good power and he's the king of kickboxing for a reason. You know, he's so consistent. He's so technical. So I think his pressure staying in the pocket with good defense, his low kicks are going to be a big factor in this fight. But Overeem's got power. And you got to remember in Overeem's, you know, last few fights, he fought someone like Francis Nagano, known as one of the biggest punchers in the world right now. So I feel that he's ready for Rico, but Rico's stay true to yourself, stay clean kickboxing. And I think he'll be able to get the job done. So it's Overeem versus Rico at the Helodome. What a night that is going to be October 23rd. I'll see you there, Joe. We'll see you there, buddy.
But first things first, it's Glory 78. We start with the Glory Super Fight Series, where two title bouts will be on the line. We open with two lightweight bouts. Mohamed Hindouf takes on Manuel Robson Minoto, followed by Israel's Ite Gershon versus Garrick Belay of France. Then two highly anticipated title bouts. Tajani Bestati taking on Elvis Gashi of the United States for the lightweight title. Then it's Yusri Belgarwi versus Donovan Visa for the middleweight crown. That will be followed by seven fights, including a rematch for the light heavyweight title and the return of Badr Hari. And that's followed by heavyweight action with Nordin Mehedin versus Raul Cantinas making his glory debut. Then another contender bout, this time in the light heavyweight division, as second-ranked Luis Tavares battles Felipe Micheletti. Then two more heavyweight bouts, with Levy Richters taking on Tomas Mosny, followed by Tariq Kababes versus Antonio Plazabat. The co-main event is a rematch from Glory 77, when Alex Pereira won a controversial split decision over then-champ Artem Vahitov. This fight is sure to have fireworks and is the most anticipated glory light heavyweight title fight of all time. And finally, the main event, featuring the return of Badr Hari, who's looking to get back to his old form that made him a K-1 champion and a knockout machine. He takes on an underdog that's not to be overlooked, the big, strong Polish Broshek. Today, Glory is excited to announce its launch of a new streaming platform now available at glorifights.com. Glory fans around the world will now be able to watch live pay-per-view events via the new streaming platform, starting with Glory 78 on September 4th. Fans must purchase the Glory 78 pay-per-view at glorifights.com. It's the only place they can buy it globally. The Glory 78 Super Fight Series will be available for free on glorifights.com. The streaming platform is Chromecast and Apple Play supported. Well, that will do it for the Glory 78 preview show. Please join myself, Bazooka Joe, Mark Schaaf, and Remy Bonyaski in what's certain to be a night you won't soon forget. For now, I'm Todd Grisham, and I'll see you at Glory 78. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. And we welcome you live inside the Ahoy in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, as we are counting down the minutes towards Glory 78 Live and exclusively on pay-per-view. Right now, you can order on Glory's new streaming platform, glorifights.com. That's the only way to see it. It's available for 19.99 euros, or in the United States, it's 24.99. You can see in the clock corner, clock in the upper corner of your screen. The pay-per-view begins in two hours and 16 minutes and 38 seconds. That's how precise things are. Hi, I'm Todd Grisham alongside the former Glory Welterweight Champion of the World, Bazooka Joe, Joseph Faltellini. We're back in the Netherlands. We're back in front of a live audience. How do you feel? Well, it feels good. I've been locked down in Canada, so to be here out of quarantine and seeing live kickboxing again, that is the most exciting thing in the world for me. So I'm happy to be here next to you, my man. And there's nothing quite as exciting as a Badr Hari fight. He is back trying to bounce back after that loss to Benjamin Adegbui, a fantastic fight where he knocked Adegbui down in round two and then got stopped himself in the third round. What do you expect from the baddest tonight? Well, the baddest Badr Hari is gonna put on a Badr Hari performance. They're always exciting, whether he wins or loses, he's always gonna put everything he has out. He's going for the knockouts, it's kill or be killed for Badr Hari. As for his opponent, Arik Vajosik, how much will he, what kind of force will he be facing in that Polish high tower? Well, the Polish high tower is very good. He's technical, good combinations, and uses low kicks really well. But when you fight Botter, that first round is the most terrifying thing in the world. He comes with a lot of power, explosive counters. So for Vajosik, it's stay defensive. And as the fight goes on, I think it goes more uh, advantages for him. For more perspective on tonight's main event, let's today backstage. There's Mark Schaff with Remy Bonyaski. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, guys. 
Good to see you. Yeah, we have a fantastic night. It's so great to be back. We have a fantastic fight card with, of course, that headliner, Bader Hari against Arkadius Rojek. And I am here with the three-time K1 world champion, Remy Gujaski, who fought Bader Hari twice. Yeah, I fought him twice. He's a skilled fighter, talented fighter, very strong. And, you know, the last couple of years I've seen him fighting. Uh, well, some of the, these fights didn't went good. But he's still strong, he's still butter, and when butter hits, he hits hard. Yeah, yeah, you know him from back in the days, and you've seen him the last week. He says he is in his best shape ever. Wow. Do you think it's true? Well, I hope he is in the, the shape that he was when he fought me the second time. Then he was at his best. And I hope that he's in that shape because then he's going to be good, then he's going to be real good, and then he will win from Rajak. But if he's not, he will lose the fight. Awesome. So we need a shot, Butter Hari. Back to you, Todd and Joe. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Joe, so how much of it, the legacy of Butter Hari is on the line tonight? Well, I think it's always on the line for him because he was such a, a big name so many years ago. You got to think he was the biggest star when he's 18 years old. He's in his mid-30s now, so he's been at the top of the world for so long, and he's still doing it and fighting the best. So I think anytime he fights, it's on the line. So, yeah, he's got to put out a big performance for us to keep cheering him on. Well, in the build-up towards Glory 78, Glory Kickboxing partnered with Badahari to put together a series of documentaries. Here's the best of the best. Right now, it's Badr Hari Legacy. game for a long time for uh, 20 years or more I've been in the top position for uh, like almost 15 years and uh, every day I'm still learning you know I'm uh, trying to uh, get better trying to make the sport better and this is uh, for me is very important because kickboxing is what I love this is my uh, this is my passion and uh, I, I want to make it uh, better and better and, and I'm still uh, trying to build it so uh, people will never uh, stop uh, training uh, and, 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 and competing in kickboxing. This is uh, my legacy. I wanna, when I finish, I want to leave it on a higher platform than when I started it. So uh, yeah, this, this, this is my main goal. So the lesson is uh, I want to give it to the next uh, era, but I want to give it uh, in, in, a, in an amazing form. Uh, what changed is uh, I have a new trainer. I train now in SB Gym with Said. He's a, he's a new uh, kickbox trainer. Uh, he brings a lot of uh, motivation, a lot of eager. He's, uh, he's really here uh, to still uh, make, uh, make me better and progress more. Uh, he works a lot on uh, tactics, and this is something uh, that's been missing uh, the last couple of years uh, with my old trainer. And this is what he has uh, very specifically. He's very tactical trainer, uh, and he works a lot on basics. So I think this is the biggest uh, change that I made. I think it was at that at, at that period I had a lot of fighters fighting, you know, and uh, I think at that period it uh, I uh, didn't uh, can give him the uh, the all intention, and he needed for that fight. It was a very uh, big fight, a very important fight. But at that period I had a lot of other fighters, and uh, I uh, can't focus 100% uh, on him. And I think now is the moment that I can focus uh, on uh, on this fight. Well, 
quick. Because in uh, Morocco there are a lot of fans, you know, because we have a lot of, it's not only, uh, you know, when Badr fight, he not only fight for himself, he fight for a lot of people who has, um, 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 they have nothing in life, you know, he gives them something uh, to fight for in life. And um, I know he had not a very easy life and he worked very hard. Uh, to came where he is now and I think he gave a lot of youth, a lot of Moroccan youth but also a lot of youth uh, in the whole world to fight for something, you know. So. Yeah, I cannot tell you this is my life. You know, after my last fight I really, it was, I really was like a wake up call. I was like, wow, I really need those guys. You know, sometimes you forget uh, how much strength the real supporters give you, you know, you you really forget because it's it gets like normal, you know. But in my last fight, I it was the first time I was really lonely. I was like, wow. He holds a professional record of 106 wins. 14 losses, 92 by knockout. His height, 6.6 .6 feet and 198 centimeters long. His weight is 241 pounds and 109.3 kilograms. Representing Morocco and former K1 heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, make way for the general of the Butter Army, introducing Butter! I miss my supporters, you know, I miss my fans, you know, I miss them all, you know, these guys are like, you know, this, yeah, man, I've, I've, I really miss them, so. Nobody can tell me I go in that ring, I am not afraid, this is, this is bullshit, you know, <laughs> we are all humans, we have this feeling, but it's the way you handle this feeling that makes you different, you know, we are all afraid, but what do you do with this afraid, you know, you stop, you give up or you fight, you know, this is, there are many ways to deal with this emotion, so. <laughs> Automatisme in je training, dat wil je eigenlijk niet. Dus je wil het hier niet te vaak gaan doen, maar dan ga je ook niet best tijd geven straks. En je ziet je bloot, die gaat er allemaal wel op zijn weg. Is this fight, is this for you, is it a step? Because I know the, the belt is still on your mind, right? Yeah, always. Yeah. Is this fight, is it a step closer to getting to I think every win, every win is a step closer. Yeah. But is, is this like, like you have like a roadmap put out for yourself for this fight? I think this is a roadmap uh, that we had to, we have to speak about with Glory, you know, because I'm not the one uh, making decisions. I would love to, but I'm not. So, uh, yeah, it's something that the organization has to look at, you know, I'm, I'm just here to win my fight and see what happens and it's up to them you know I'm in, I'm, I'm in service of, uh, of, of glory so uh, let's see what they say and uh, yeah of course uh, the belt is on my mind Thank you. 
it's a big fight for me because uh, you know I had some I had some bad years. You know, I'm 36. I'm very young still. You know, I'm in a great shape. I'm, I'm stronger than everybody in the gym. Faster. I got more uh, stamina. I'm 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 better than everything. So, uh, <clears throat> but I, I was just too unlucky this this last year. But maybe it was also because my mind was not on it. You know, the last year was uh, very hectic. Like I said, I was sick. I got twins. You know, the pandemics. I got a lot of things going on. But like I said, you know, no excuses. You know, this is just story of my life. So. <laughs> You choose to fight, so you choose to win, or you choose to lose. So, you know, this, this, it just happens. I'm very hungry again. You know, he, he's been, he's been knowing me for a long time. He knows my good spots, you know, he knows my weaknesses. I don't have a lot, but some, and, uh, he just works on them very well, you know, basics, 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 and uh, a lot of things are going to be different. I think it's a very important fight, you know, for me. I think he's a very uh, talented fighter. You cannot underestimate him. So, uh, but yeah, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life, so it's going to be a hard fight for him. I think, you know, he, he, fight, he fights against me, so this is uh, the chance of his life. So he will be prepared uh, as good as possible. And uh, me also, for me, is also uh, a very big fight, this one. So, uh, yeah, I got, I, got a lot, I, got a lot to, I got a lot to do, but, you know, I put in the work. So I'm going to be ready. And we welcome you back inside the Ahoy Arena as we count down the minutes towards Glory 78. Todd Grisham alongside Joseph Valtellini. And from watching that documentary, it almost felt like it was a new, kinder, gentler Badr Hari. Did you sense that? Yeah, his loss to Attic Bowie kind of made him humble a little bit. He was very respectful, talking positive about Vashosek, you know, changing team, a lot of finding his love for kickboxing. But then yesterday Yeah, happened. yesterday happened and the old Badr raised his head again. Let's take you back to the final stare down at yesterday's weigh-in between Badr Hari and Arik Vajosic. And with that, we get you set for tonight's pay-per-view. The only way to see it is on our new streaming platform, gloryfights.com, 1999 euros or 24.99 in the United States. That is about two hours away. As for us, coming up next, it's the Super Fight Series, live and free, four fights, including two world title fights. The Glory Super Fight Series starts right now. Glory brings the Super Fight Series back to Rotterdam. for the intro middleweight championship. Oh! oh it's right here from Donovan Visa out of nowhere. And there's another body shot right to the rib cage. Five rounds for the lightweight championship of the world. What a headshot shot from the four. It's got to be over. And it is. Glory's lightweight division. That output is just insane. A spinning eye kick. And he's done it all. Uppercut. See you later.
We are live in the mecca of kickboxing, the Netherlands, about 60 miles west of Amsterdam. We're in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. More specifically, we are at the Ahoy Arena. COVID reduced attendance tonight. We expect, though, a jam packed house for the return of the baddest, Bader Hari, as he squares off against the Polish high tower, Arik Vajosik. That pay-per-view starts about two hours from now. First things first, it's the Glory Super Fight Series and our on-camera to introduce the former Glory welterweight champion of the world, Joseph Valtellini. We got crowd back. Yep. We're back in the Netherlands. Should be a good night. Well, it feels good to be back. I mean, last time we weren't here live, but live kickboxing is the best thing in the world. The sound of these guys hitting, the low kick smacking. So being live is the best place to be. And we've got four fights on the Glory Super Fight Series, including two world title fights. What? <laughs> what are we doing here? Donovan Visa and Yusri Bulgari for the middleweight championship. Tajani Bezzati, only 23, squaring off against American Elvis Gashi for the lightweight world championship. And two fantastic fights to get the card started, which we'll talk about momentarily. But the big name fighters have entered the building. There, Joe, is Donovan Visa. Yep, Visa's got a big opportunity. This is a rematch against Belgari, so. Here he comes in now, Belgari looking for revenge and wants that world title. It's his third crack at a world title. It is, and a rematch with Visa. There's Tajani Bestati, the 23-year-old Moroccan, who gets his third world title shot, promising to cash in, but it won't be easy against the uber-aggressive Elvis Super Gashi. And let's focus in on that lightweight world championship, Elvis Gashi fighting out of New York by way of Albany. He's the number three ranked lightweight in the world, but he's facing off against a man that's much taller and much longer. Yeah, both guys have great professional records, both you know, very talented and technical. And you can see how long and technical Tajani is. He's got good use of his hands, and he makes things well with his kicks and his knees as well. So dangerous, so long, and he just keeps getting better. As Todd just mentioned, only 23 years old. But Toddy promises tonight will be his night as he seeks his first world title. Well, that means a lot, you know. It's, it's, it's not only, it means not only everything to me but also especially for the young people in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, in Suriname, you know, because that's also my heritage, and in Morocco as well. As for Elvis Super Gashi, we know exactly what he's going to do tonight. Southpaw power. He comes forward and he looks to land all those left side attacks. You see him loading up that left hand. He's got good kicks and you've seen him put people out with some nasty body kicks as well. Just straight power. Straight left kick, nonstop action from Gashi. Can Elvis Gashi get the job done? He knows how important tonight is. I just became a father, so I'm married. I have two boys, twins. Six months ago they were born, Noir and Norik, so it's going to be great to send the belt to my family, you know? I'll be the first Albanian champion glory. So a massive moment for those two fighters. The same can be said about Donovan Visa and Yusri Belgari. This is a rematch, Joe, but much more on the line tonight. Yeah, in the first fight, you know, Belgari kind of took it a little bit easy, but he has the most experience. He's taller, so he wants to use that to his advantage. When you see Belgari fight, it's about long punches, but as you close distance, he's got some of the nastiest knees. He's got to watch, you know, when Visa comes in, he's got to be careful from those big knees coming up the middle. Belgari telling us, sure, he lost the first fight, but the rematch will be a completely different story with the title on the line. Um, it's my work ethic, my mental game, my, my physical game. Everything has, has evolved, and I feel that I'm uh, literally coming into my prime. I am in my prime right now. Uh, the feedback I'll be getting from sparring sessions, the feedback I'll be getting from, from training, every, everything, you know, I feel it's coming. What makes Donovan Visa so good? Well, I think he's so young and just so confident. His ability to come forward, move his head, use counter punches, and then when he touches you, he just has good knockout power. And we've seen him, once he beat the Belgaris, the Jason Wilnesses, we knew he was ready for these bigger fights. Well, he's already beaten Belgari once, but he knows tonight it'll take a much stronger effort to do it again. The world titles, the gold, the dream, it's here, yes. you know? 
give me your thoughts on what it would mean to you to, to win that belt. And I mean, you got to think, Suriname has some of the greatest fighters in the world, and you put your name on that list. Of course, uh, it's going to be a great feeling. You know, uh, I, dream, I dreamt about it, I dream about it every day, the feeling I was going to feel, uh, what I'm going to do. But uh, uh, Saturday must be, must be a great day for me, and uh, I'm going to show you guys that I belong, I'll be the world champion. You know, for the first fight, Yushri Belgari came down the ramp, was mean, mugging Visa, tried to intimidate him. It didn't work out so well. No. Tonight, he promises a different strategy. What's the fight going to look like? Well, I think it's Belgari trying to stay long because he's the taller fighter, and we know Visa needs to come forward. So I think it's Belgari trying to catch him coming in. But what we've seen with Visa, his combinations, his powers, mixing levels, his kicks can come to low, to high. It's very unpredictable. So. Crashing distance is going to be the key in this fight. All right, let's get a different perspective now as we sit it backstage for the first time. There's Mark Schaff with the legend himself, Remy Bonyaski. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, as you've already shown us, we have a great fight card on the Super Fight Series, including those two title fights, Remy. Give us your thoughts about the lightweight title fight. The lightweight title fight uh, between Bastanti and Gashi is a, is, is a great fight, a great matchup. I believe that Tijani is skillful, good with his hands, good with his legs, also good with his combination. And Gashi, I hope he's fit. I hope he's ready to rock because he's going to get it if he's not. Yeah, and then we have that rematch uh, between uh, Yusri Belgarui and Donovan Visser. That's going to be a match, man. Wow, I'm looking forward to that fight. Uh, two great fighters. Uh, they're both skillful. And I don't know what it is, but I, I, I think Visa is ready to rock. And Belgarui, he, he, he done some MMA, he done some MMA the last uh, one and a half years. So I think he's also ready. They're both fit. We're going to see tonight what's going to happen. Any predictions? Well, I don't want to make uh, enemies, but... <laughs> I'm, no I'm, predictions tonight. Okay, okay. Back to you guys. <laughs> you let him off the hook, Mark. What are you doing? He was going to give it to us. You let him off the hook. I think he, he believes Elvis Gashi's in for a tough time tonight, but never count out the Albanian-American. The only way to purchase tonight's pay-per-view is on GloryFights.com. It's the new home for all Glory pay-per-view events. Don't lose out on the return of Badr Hari and what many are calling Glory's greatest ever light heavyweight title rematch between Pereira and Artem Vahitov. Just €19.99 or $24.99 U.S. dollars. Without further ado, let's get the Glory Super Fight Series started. While the world waited, kickboxing's brightest talent continued to sharpen their skills and prepare themselves for a return to the sport's biggest stage, where tonight, the vacant lightweight belt is up for grabs, and the quest to be the best middleweight in the world will be settled here tonight in the Glory Super Fight Series. All of our bouts tonight sanctioned by Fight Sports Organization of the Netherlands, Rotterdam Ahoy! Are you ready for glory? We begin in the lightweight division and about scheduled for three three-minute rounds. He puts his training practices with a glory champion to the test tonight. Please welcome Manuel Robson. His nickname is Minoto, but Alex Pereira, the current light heavyweight champion of the world, gave this guy a nickname, Baby Poetom, which basically means Baby Alex Pereira. That's a lot to live up to. Yeah, I mean, speaking to his team, I mean, they're just so confident in him that he has so much potential. And watching, you know, his previous fights coming into glory, and I have to agree, very technical, very sharp technique. And he can do everything really well. He's got good hands, nice low kicks, 
good knees on the inside, and a lot of his fighting strategy would be similar to what I would do, you know, get inside, chop the legs, and once the legs are hurt, he likes to go inside and finish with the hands. And he's got a lot of power, 21 wins, 15 by knockouts, that's a 71% knockout ratio as he walks the walk for the first time at Glory Kickboxing. Joe, what do you expect from him tonight? Well, I think it's a clean performance, but a clean performance against Hendouf's difficult because of that output and volume. So I think Minoto's gonna have to try to use some power to try to slow down Hendouf. He has that ability to kind of be a point fighter and stick to power. So I think the ability to adapt tonight's gonna be a key. He took a split decision win over Garrick Belay in his debut in Leona Glory 70. Here comes Mohammed Hendu. Yeah, Joe, they are not giving Minoto an easy fight to ease into glory at all. Mohamed Hindu can bring the goods. Just ask welterweight champion Cedric Dubé, who is a frequent sparring partner of Hindu. He says this guy has the best gas tank of anyone I've ever met. Yeah, and this is his third fight in glory, and his previous two fights were insane. He did not stop. Just keeps going forward from round one to round three. It's just a crazy amount of output coming from the punches, the kicks, the knees. And he creates nice little angles as well. So I still think he needs to stay technical and respect the power of Minoto. But I think this is a, a good fight for Hendouf to get back on his winning ways. Fighting out of Brussels, Belgium, by way of Morocco, he is Mohamed Hindouf. And here is our tale of the tape for our opener here on the Glory Super Fight Series. It is a welterweight, a lightweight rather showdown. Hindu, five foot 11, that's four inches taller than his Brazilian counterpart. He will also have a four inch reach advantage. When it comes to professional experience, you know, a big edge going to Mohamed Hendouf. But as we talk about that power, that baby Poetan power with a 71% KO ratio for Minoto. The rules for tonight, three rounds, three minutes each. Punches, kicks, and knees are the legal strikes. Three knockdowns in a round or four in the fight results in a TKO. The nice belts are gonna be scored using the following criteria, starting with knockdowns, followed by damage inflicted, followed by number of clean scoring strikes. First, with spectacular techniques, followed by normal scoring techniques. Finally, if there's no clear advantage, judges look for aggression. We do have open scoring tonight. Five judges score the fight on the 10-point must system. Additional points are deducted for knockdowns or rule violations. We are once again scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. This black belt comes with a 71% knockout ratio as a lightweight. His professional record, 21 wins with just five losses. 15 of those 21 wins have come by way of knockout. Standing five feet, seven inches tall, 1.74 meters. He weighed in at 154.1 pounds, 69.9 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Manuel Minoto Robson. Here now is his opponent, fighting out of the white corner, a 2019 Netherlands eight-man tournament winner. As a professional, 36 wins, seven losses, one bout scored even, and eight career knockouts. He stands five feet 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters, and he weighed in at fight time at 154.3 pounds and even 70 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Morocco, he is Mohammed. And do! And your referee in charge of this contest, Yosef Akne. Fighters, you know the rules? I want to clear the fight, okay? Obey the commands at all time, protect yourself at all time. Clear? Touch gloves. Minoto's so excited to fight, he forgot to take his shirt off. This should be a banger right out of the gate. 
Monoto wanting to impress in his glory debut, and Hindu will fight like he always does. Non-stop action. Round one, scheduled for three. Minoto Robson in the red, Muhammad Hindu in the black. Nice kick to the body there for Minoto to start things. Yeah, I think Minoto's gonna have to show some of his power to kind of slow that Hindu output. So I think that's gonna be a key for Minoto. High kick just missing for Minoto. Alex Pereira would normally be in his corner, but since he's fighting later tonight, he's backstage. But he did tell us, yes, I expect Minoto to win. I expect him to become a champion because I created him. Nice left hook to the body by the Brazilian. Yeah, you can see how already he's got very technical boxing with good power kicks. So it's almost like he's got, he's a boxer upstairs, but he's got Muay Thai legs, you know? It kind of gives him that nice balance for kickboxing. Both fighters appear to be in phenomenal condition. Speaking to Hendu for this fight, he knows that everyone knows he's got that output, that good gas tank, but preparing for this fight, he wants to show a little bit more power. He knows that sometimes the output isn't enough. You need to start hurting your opponent, so power helps. His last fight was against another Brazilian, Bruno Gazzani. He felt he, oh, nice right hand by Hindu, And that backs the Brazilian up. And I like that one-for-one one kick, body kick versus low kick. He lost that fight by split decision. Felt he should have performed better. He said, listen, that guy's one-dimensional. I should have beat him. But he didn't. Vows not to make the mistake again tonight. Minoto talks a lot about using the low kicks, but tonight he's really liking those arm kicks. There's the mix-up to the legs. Already some redness on the body of Hindu about the left eye and on the body, but that won't slow him down. Nice flurry there from the Moroccan. Oh! Right hand, and down goes Minoto! One. That's slipping two, rip, baby. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Step a four. huge wake-up call. Can Robson Fight. answer it? Flying knee attempt, cut of the pass by Minoto. But Hindu unloading upstairs. He's taking little angles, punching, cutting down shots. Back. Step back. Those angle changes in the punches for Hindu is what got him that knockdown. Yeah, Minoto in all kinds of trouble. 30 seconds to go still here in round one. Minoto needs to be careful. When he's shelled up like that, if anything, he's got to quickly try to grab a clincher because he's eating a lot of big shots when he's shelled up like that. And Hindu will keep throwing bombs. He does not get tired. You see what Hindu does. He comes forward with a nice high guard. And then when he anticipates the counter, he moves his head and rips the punch. That's like that. Well done. Stop. And that will do it for an entertaining round one that saw Minoto Robson go to the canvas. It was a fun little first round. You know, Minoto started strong, but then Hendu found that shot. Watch this little angle change with the head, came over with the right hand. That's textbook slip and rip knockdown right there. Beautiful. You saw a small cut opening over the left eye of Hindu. As Minoto's got a lot of work to do, Joe. Yep, here he's kind of mixing his combinations now, going punch to kick. Oh! He sets him down! How about that for a momentum Two. swing? Three. Unbelievable. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Hands up. Eight. Fight! Minoto goes down in round one. Hindu down in round two. What a start to tonight's festivities. All five judges giving round one 10-8. To Hindu, who's firing back again. Yeah, hindu has got to cut counter back with those punches just like that. I think when Hindu's waiting too long, 
you know, that's when Minolta picks up the momentum. So if Hendoof's got to be first. Hendoof has never been in a boring fight, Joe. No, not at all. With that volume and that pressure. And honestly, after watching Minolto's, you know, pre-fights before Gloria now, I don't think he's been in any boring ones either. They're just waiting to unload those big power punches. Hendoof doing all his damage with the boxing. That one landed as well. Yeah, both gentlemen are going nice rips to the body, and that's probably what's setting up those big head punches. Invest in the body. Downstairs with a low kick from Hindu. Good left hook from Minoto. Break! After break, break! No action after break. Fight! Spinning back fist blocked there by Minoto. Yeah, Minoto's trying to clash, uh, crash the distance with his knees, which is a good strategy. But here comes that Hindu pressure that makes him so scary. Oh, big right hand connecting from Minoto. Right as Hindoof was about to throw one of his own. Yeah, it's that right hand from Hindoof that's doing most of the work for him. Both men trying to land those flying knees. Yeah, this is a better strategy for Minoto, though, to kind of crash that distance. When he's fighting backwards, that's when Hendoof's doing well. Like, staying off these ropes and here using his clinch would be a good strategy for him now. Minoto seems to feel that he can go punch for punch with him. Break. Step back. He showed in the beginning of the round yeah. that he got that knockdown that he can. Probably gave him a little bit more confidence, but it seems like maybe a little bit of fatigue now from that constant pressure from Hendoof. And look at these exchanges from Hendoof. Just letting his fist fly, and Minoto can't answer back. And I like those chopping shots from Hendoof, just like that. Cut down on that right hand. Then he's mixing the uppercut. What's up? Good round. And what a way to start the night. I'm not sure that'll be a 10-8 round, Joe. It normally would be, but Hindoof may have won it after that knockdown. Yeah, you would think so. I mean, but remember, the scoring criteria, you can't you know, lose that round. So, yeah, it could possibly be a 10-9. But that quick little power, invest in the body, come back upstairs. That was a nice little combination with the hands. It was a left, almost an uppercut. Yeah, it kind of slipped under the hands. This is where Hendoof wanted to, to keep Minolto away with a front kick. But you can see that distance crash from the Brazilian. And here's at the end of the round where Hendoof just decided, I'm going to just go for it. Yeah, and that's it. When, when you have a fighter shelled up against the ropes like that, you can see Minoto's in no ability to really counter too much. So good job on Hendoof on sensing that. And even if he's blocking most of those punches, the judges still see that activity. And sometimes you think a punch lands when it didn't. But even defending your head like that, even if they get blocked, it still rattles your head a lot. So, I mean, you can still knock someone out that way. A fantastic encounter, and it all boils down to this final three minutes. Who you got, Joe? Well, I think Hendoof looks like, obviously, the more fresher fighter going into this round. And that is a push. But you can see Minoto wins round two, 10-8 on all five scorecards, so it's all squared at 18. Whoever wins the next three minutes wins the fight. Hendoof just landed a nice front kick to the face. I don't think Minoto liked that one too much. That's one of the worst strikes to take. Total strikes in Doof. 57 landed, 74 for Minoto. Yeah, it looks like, based on the strikes, that Minoto's the busier fighter. But right now, it looks like Hendoof's the fresher. Oh, nice question mark kick there for Hendoof. Minoto has to get going. Yeah, he's waiting a little too long with the fatigue. You know, he's been rocked. And we know Hendoof's not going to stop. Minoto wants to land the right hand. He keeps setting it up. There was a digging right hand to the body. Step back. As Hendoof glances up, blood continues to trickle out of the cut. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to rip your shot. A body shot sends Minoto down One, for a second two, time. He's three, gasping for air. Four. Five, 
six, seven, eight. You okay? You okay? He's up. Nine, ten. Oh. And they waved it off. They have waved it off. What a performance from Mohammed Hindu. And already the Moroccans in here are going crazy for him. Beautiful performance. The way, how technical he was, the way he mixed it up. Body punches, head punches, good kicks. Fantastic performance from Hendouf. And to get that finish, he said he worked his power, and it showed. Hendouf was not happy with the judging in his last fight. He promised to take it out of their hands, and boy, did he ever. Two knockdowns of Minoto Robson does the trick as Hendouf picks up his second glory win. see how technical the fight was to start, but as the third round went, Hendouf's combinations, his pressure started to add up, and that investment in the body got him this finish. Uppercut, touch to the body, perfectly set up. That right uppercut, left hook combination is one of the best. It looked like Hendouf didn't put a lot of power into that left hook, but it landed perfectly on the liver. Yeah, w once you touch the liver, it doesn't need a lot of power. You know, the right placement is everything for it. It's the shutdown button. Shades of Giga emergency shutdown, folks. Shades of Giga Chikatsi, a former glory go. kickboxer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a start it has been tonight. And trust me, it's only going to get better as we count down the minutes to Glory 78. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. Let's take a look at our highlights from this rousing opener between Hendouf and Minoto. Yeah, that first round was a fun round. We saw Hendouf do some work with that overhand right, slipped his head off beautifully. But then we saw Minoto come back, land a good knockdown himself with that nice little left hook. And those first two rounds were tied up going into that third round. But you can see this was the end of the second when Hendouf went off. He's a buzzsaw. He just doesn't stop. We call him the Energizer Bunny. But this third round, you saw that Hendouf was the fresher fighter, put the pressure on, mixed his kicks and punches well, and then got that knockdown. I mean, head-to-head, -head, close range, that right uppercut left hook to the body is just one of the textbook close range finishes to the body. You said Minoto had to get inside on Hendouf, and yet it was Hendouf who won that inside boxing battle and put the Brazilian down in his glory debut. Here are the final strike count numbers, and Joe Hendouf, 143 total strikes thrown. Yeah, that volume's gonna be dangerous for anybody he fights. The only way to stop him is you gotta knock him out. Let's make it official with Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee Yusuf Akni has waved this contest off with an official time of one minute, 30 seconds of that third and final round, ending this one by technical knockout. For your winner, Mohammed Hendu! Mark Schaff is with our winner. I am here with your winner, Mohamed Handouf. That was a spectacular match. Give us your thoughts on the fight. He said, yeah, I'm here with Mohamed Handouf. It was a combat spectacular. What are your impressions on the combat? What do you think about the combat? First of all, I'm very happy to fight in Glory. The fight was long. I haven't fought for 17 months. It's a fight, so it's a great pleasure. He said, first of all, he, yeah, he said, he said that for, first of all, he is glad to be to be back because he, he did not fight for uh, 17 months right now, and he is glad to be back to back to business. Yeah. All right. Well, you had a wonderful performance. Thank you so much. Give it up for Mohammed Hendouf. So is this the forebear of things to come, Joe? Not so much will Morocco win in the main event with Badr Hari, but will Alex Pereira 
his Brazilian trainer win tonight against Artem Bahita. Well, I mean, I hope all the fights continue this way. I mean, but it's a good start for the Moroccans tonight, that's for sure. Well, still to come tonight, Tajani Bestati may be the best kickboxer in the world under 25, but is he ready to be a world champion? He gets his shot next, and his opponent will be ready to rock. He'll have all of Albania behind him. This New York-based fighter has vowed to walk Tajani down and knock him out and win the lightweight title. That, of course, is Elvis Gashi. But coming up next, a crossroads fight in the lightweight division. Israel's Itai Gershon has shown great technical ability with a nasty streak, and he'll need it against France's Garrick Belay, who believes his time is now as he searches for a fourth glory win, which would probably put him in title condition. That's up next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. Our next bout this evening, also scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. He's coming off a unanimous decision win in Utrecht at Glory 75. Make him feel welcome. Here is Garrick Belay. Garrick Belay, only 24 years old, and Joe, speaking with him yesterday, we've never seen him this confident. He's usually quiet, reserved, but he says, listen, you've only seen me at 70%. Tonight, you'll see me at 100. Yeah, I mean, every time he fights, I tend to say it that he's one of my favorite fighters to watch in the upcoming group of fighters in glory. He fights hard, he fights forward, he's got some nasty combinations, good low kicks, and he's just ready to scrap anyone, anytime. He won his first three glory starts all in New York City. Please welcome Etai Gershon. Is this Little Richard? I believe so. Wow, never heard that before. Whatever it takes to get your motor running, and Etai Gershon's motor is usually one. He's won four out of his five glory fights, Joe, and you know how talented he is. Oh, yeah, he's not only talented, but he's explosive, he's tricky, and he's constantly getting better. He's hungry, he fights both stances, and you're just going to see a lot of spin and flying attacks from him. Exciting fighter. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape. Lightweight division, 154 pounds, 70 kilograms. Both men in their 20s. Belay with a slight height advantage, although it's the Israeli, Itay Gershon, who has a slight reach advantage, 73 inches to 72. Professional experience, the younger Belay has 36 fights to 22 of Itay Gershon. But like I said, power and explosiveness, you know, is equal in both guys. But according to record, Belay has the advantage when it comes to knockouts. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. Introducing first, standing on my right and fighting out of the black corner. He is a French national champion and a karate black belt. His professional record, 32 wins with four losses, 14 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters, he weighed in at 153.7 pounds, 69.7 kilograms. Fighting out of Burgundy, France, rank number 10 in the Glory World Rankings. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Garrick Belay. Here now is his opponent, standing on my left and fighting out of the white corner, European and world amateur champion, winner of eight of his last nine bouts. His record, 17 wins with five losses, six of those wins coming by way of knockout. At five feet nine and one half inches, 1.76 meters, he weighed in at 154.1 pounds, 69.9 kilograms. He's here tonight 
fighting out of Tel Aviv, Israel, and ranked number five in the world, here is Itai Gershon. And once again, your referee in charge of this contest, Yusuf Akni. Fighters, you know the rules. I want to clear in a fair fight. Obey the commands at all time, protect yourself at all time, okay? Touch gloves, step back. There's not an average fight on the card tonight, Joe. This one could just as well be the fight of the night. Yeah, Dude. this is probably one of my favorite fights on the card, to be honest. Being a kickboxing fight. cannon technician, this is the one to watch. All right, Garrett Boulay wearing the black gloves. E. Tiger, Sean in the white gloves. You'll notice right away, Belay is going to be more that steady forward pressure where Gershon's going to explode more. Use his footwork and then just explode with those body kicks, spin kicks, knees. And we continue to count down the minutes to Glory 78, headlined by the return of Badr Hari. The only place to see it, gloryfights.com. You can see Belay wants to stay close to Gershon because he knows he's explosive. To shut off an explosive kick, good. Got to come forward. Good uppercut there from Belay. In this fight, you'll also notice Gershon switching stances. Oh, another one! The left hand this time scores for the Frenchman. Yep, you'll see Gertai switching stances a lot. Right now, he wants to go southpaw body kick a lot. Break! Step back. Itai Gershon calls himself a family man, has two children, Jonathan and Ariel. I asked Blake, him what step back. they do together. He says, watch we out. watch a lot of kickboxing in Muay Thai. Start him young. That's what I find myself doing a lot. You get your girls watching it's either It's either kids' cartoons or fights. Sometimes my daughters are fighting themselves. A lot of kickboxing fights, Joe. We'll see more Dutch style where one fighter shells up, eats hey. some punches, and delivers some of his own. These two guys come together and both throw punches. Yeah, usually they that's called like a combo back and forth kind of style, but with the open stance fight here, it's uh, hey. and both being technical, the way they're throwing is very nice. See, right now you saw Gershon change to the right stance now. Swing and a miss there for Belay. Belay! Belay, a one-time French champion. Watch out for the elbow. Punch-based offense with an emphasis on hard low kicks. There's one there. And another. That was a good right hand in that exchange for Gershon. Those knees to the thigh don't feel too good either, do they? No, on the inside, you see a lot of guys do that a lot. Actually, Alex Pereira did that a lot against Vahitov in their last fight. So we'll probably see that in our pay-per-view main event, co-main event. Very competitive round one here in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. It's a tough one to score. Yeah, it's extremely tough. I thought uh, Gershon did good kicking, fighting backwards, but I think Belay's pressure, the hands may have gave him a slight edge in that one. Well, right now, Ite Gershon looks extremely fatigued. Feet up, arms on the ropes, big breasts, mouth open. Did I say big breasts? I meant big breaths. Big breaths. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> As for Garrick Belay, he decides to stand. Yeah, there you go. Most fighters like to stand in it. But uh, like you mentioned, former French national champion, and he's just started, you know, good in glory with tough fights. And I think as he gets more experience, we'll start seeing better performance from him. Still young, only 24 years old. And this is his sixth glory fight. It is round two, scheduled for three. Kind of a crossroads fight here in the lightweight division. The winner certainly throws their name in a title contender mix. 
especially if you're Itai Gershon, who comes in ranked number five. Big hands landing there for Belay. Yeah, I like to Gershon to get back to his kicks a little bit. But at the end of the first, his hands were flowing well, so maybe just a little bit more activity. Being first for Gershon would be a good strategy as the fight goes on. Joe, when you're blocking a body kick with your arms, do you try and block with your elbows or your forearms? No, ideally you want to block a body kick with two arms because, you know, your tibia is stronger than, you know, your radius and all nine your forearm. So blocking with two arms is safer. You can see the redness on Belay's arms from blocking those body kicks from Gershon. Yeah, in, in kickboxing, hey, the body kick is always a controversial topic. In Muay Thai, it scores very well, but, you know, a lot of kickboxers say, you know, the arm kick is the way you block it. So a lot of the uh, European kickboxers don't love the arm kicks as a scoring strike. I think if it does damage, it is a scoring strike. Hey. Kick with, that kick was checked by Belay. Definitely a better round here for Gershon. Mm. I think his kicks being Relaxes. first is helping, mm. which is he helping him Fight. set up those big power punches. Belay looks so much bigger. Good defense there for Gershon, not having to back up so we can stay inside and combo back. Seen Gershon do that running, flying knee to success in the past. That's what I thought was coming, to be honest. I was waiting for it. The air Gershon. <laughs> this is definitely a, a way better pass. round for Gershon. And then a knee to the face. Break. Nice little angles as well. Well, whatever they did to Gershon in the corner, it works. Yep. He looked like he was the more fatigued fighter, and here he is. Again, landing the knee was Gershon. 20 seconds to go here in round two. Nice jabs back and forth. Play. Step back. Glory Fight, the new home for all Glory pay-per-views, including tonight's Glory 78. Gloryfights.com is the place to be, and Glory 78 starts in one hour, 16 minutes, and 25 seconds, Joe, in case you didn't see our clock, upper right-hand corner of the screen. Said it's been helping you out, keeps us on track. Does this feel like a one round apiece fight to you? Yeah, that, that's what's going on in my head right now. I gave Belay slight edge in the first, very, very close. I mean, could be the other way as well, but I think Gershon definitely took that second. <laughs> round three, lightweight division. Derek Belay from France, Itai Gershon from Israel wearing the blue trunks. A very close fight thus far. And I guarantee you Belay's corner told him to use that jab. He had a little bit of success with it at that end of the second, and now he's pumping it a lot in the third. Good energy to start the round here for Belay. Step back, step back. Belay doesn't like the tie clinch too much. Every time, you know, Gershon grabs it, he kind of just charges forward. Four out of the five judges have it all even, which means it does come down to this round. Belay, step back. Fatigue beginning to set in. Yeah, you can tell when fatigue kicks in when the clinch 
tends to stay a little longer, right? Where these guys, when they're fresh, they were fighting in that head-to-head -head range. Good flurry there from Boulay. Save that shoe shine, rips through the body. Boulay! Step back. Step back, step back. Let's look at our total strikes thus far. Gershon has landed 26 more shots than Garrick Belay. Oh, beautiful angle work there from Gershon. Step outside that lead foot. Creates a nice Blay. angle for your left hand. Step back, step back, step back. A look at the clock for Belay. This round is... Yeah, it seems to be the closest yet. Could come down to who's in better condition. And it seems like Belay starts, and you think he's gaining Blake. momentum, but then Gershon comes Blake, back, Blake, finds Blake. momentum. They kind of fight in like 10 second bursts each, which makes it very difficult to score. Good body work from Belay. He's thrown more combinations, Joe. Yeah, and I think this is where Gershon needs to pick it up if he wants to steal this round. Blake! Step back. Overhand right, lands for Gershon, but he eats a straight right hand from Belay. Yeah, he pulled counter that really well. A little Mayweather action there. Yeah, Gershon. Step back. No action. Taking some deep breaths. Ten seconds to go. And that will do it. Spinning back kick from Belay. Yeah. Let me tell you, I used, to be a, aren't you? I used to be a real tough guy. No one ever saw it. Yeah, you were undefeated back in those days, weren't you? Speaking of tough guys, Tim Hughes is back with glory and in the ring now with the judge's decision. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's look at the totals from our five ringside judges. Two judges score the bout 29-28, Belay. Two judges score at 29-28, Gershon. And our fifth and final judge has it, 29-29 even. This bout is a draw. Huh. That means one of the judges had to give someone a 10-8 round. Am I correct? I'm not too sure. You have to, if it's 10-9, 10-9, 10-9, it can't be a draw. One of the judges had it 20-18, uh, I remember that. Or maybe they scored one of the rounds even. Even round, yeah. That could be it. Which yeah. you don't really see much in kickboxing. You don't, you never see it. But here, here are the final statistics. Yeah. And yep, the third round, according to one judge, 10-10 even. Yeah, it's a close fight. I'm not upset with that, to be honest with you. I mean, I would have liked a winner, but it's that close of a fight. Yeah, we would have liked a winner, but it's good not to have a loser. Yeah, there you go. There you have it. Still to come, ladies and gentlemen, it is for the middleweight championship of the world. Tunisia's tall, rangy, and powerful Yusri Belgari seeks his first gold as a glory fighter. But standing in his way, the young and dangerous Donovan Visa, who's already beaten Belgari once, can he do it again with the championship up for grabs? But coming up next, guess what? Another world title fight. And it happens in the lightweight division. Tajani Bezzati versus Super Elvis Gashi.
He's a great fighter. He's a tough fighter, but I'm faster than Tenjani and Song. People always talk and talk and talk, but at the end of the day, it's what happens in the ring. You know, I, I've been sparring with heavy hitters, you know, because we knew Elvis, Elvis, the only thing that he can bring is coming forward, throwing, throwing leather. If you want to brawl, we have an answer for that, and I'm ready for war. It might come back, so I'm ready to just fight, train harder, feel good, I'm strong. I'm ready for this fight. You will see the old Tijani back. My kicks, my knees, my punches, everything is wrapped in one. Anybody can get it and anybody is welcome. I can't wait to show you guys. I'm here to represent America. I'm here to represent Albania and my family as well. I'll give my best on Saturday night. I'll give it all just to get that belt. Well, I got some bad news for you, my guy. The title ain't going nowhere. You're gonna stay here in the Netherlands and uh, I'll see you in the ring, my friend. Five rounds for the lightweight championship of the world. Stijani, the wonder boy, Bestati. Oh, what a shot from Bestati. Super Elvis Gossi. Ladies and gentlemen, we are scheduled for five three-minute rounds for the vacant lightweight championship of the world, Elvis Gashi and Tijani Bistahi. Super Elvis Gashi! I'm ready. Everyone in the theater is on their feet. It's got to be over. And it is. Elvis Super Gashi has shot the kickboxing world. His career highlights include a 23 second knockout with a devastating liver kick in Orlando at Glory 67. Here is Elvis. Gashi! He may appear to be undersized, especially in this battle against Tajani Bestardi, but his heart, Joe, will never perhaps be matched. No, and he has power, so you can never count him out of a fight. His last fight was against Barack Gregorian for the world title. Came up unsuccessful, that was his first loss in his career, but he's learned a lot from there, came back, made the adjustments, and he gets a crack at that world title again. Born in, born in Kosovo, moved to Belgium, now lives in New York City. He will leave that for Saturday night. What a game shot from Bestari! Tashani Bestari with a massive knockout! He is one of the youngest to ever sign a glory contract and now takes his shot at kickboxing immortality. Please welcome Tejani Bestati. Earlier 
earlier tonight, Tajani Bestati was in the ring warming up Joe, and he kept screaming, and new! He believes this fight is his to win, and if you just look at the height and reach advantage, it's hard to disagree. Yeah, and I mean, and he came into Glorious, one of the youngest fighters, turned pro at 17 years old, and here he is at 23 years old in his third world title fight. Came close twice, looking for the third time to be the charm, and he is the favorite as he faces Elvis Gashi. Here's our tale of the tape for the lightweight championship of the world. Bestati, only 23. He will enjoy a six inch height advantage and a nearly six inch reach advantage as well. But that's nothing new for Elvis Gashi, who loves to get inside and work that body. And you can see even how close this fight is based on professional experience. Both have 24 fights. You know, both have good knockouts on their career, but the edge going to the American Elvis Gashi. This is a world title fight, slightly different championship rules. We go five three-minute rounds, punching kicks and knees are legal. Three knockdowns in a round or four in the fight result in a TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, the vacant lightweight championship is on the line and about scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, a U.S. national champion and four-time Kosovo champion. His professional record impressive. 23 wins with just one loss. Almost half of those wins coming by way of knockout. He is five and one in his six glory appearances. At five feet, nine inches tall, 1.75 meters. He weighed in at 153.9 pounds, 69.8 kilograms. Fighting tonight out of the Bronx, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Super Elvis. Here now is his opponent, standing on my left and fighting out of the white corner, a six-time Dutch champion and winner of four of his last five bouts. His professional record, 20 wins with just four losses, seven of those wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet, three inches tall, 1.90 meters, he weighed in at fight time at 154.3 pounds and even 70 kilos. Fighting out of Morocco, ladies and gentlemen, Tejani, the Wonder Boy, Bestati. And your referee in charge of this bout, Mikaela Kovakova. Follow the glory rules, okay? Good luck and stand back. Here we go, Joe. Lightweight yes, championship yes, of the world on the line. Elvis Gashi in the black gloves, Bestati in the white. Gashi will try and close the distance. He has to. Yeah, it's closing the distance, but also cutting the ring off because Tajani's got good movement. He's going to try to circle out versus that pressure. So cutting the ring off, key for Gashi. Body kick from Gashi, followed up by a quick jab. Gashi's known for that left kick to the liver. Throws it with a lot of power. To Johnny says. Oh, big left hand sends Bestati down. That is a knockdown. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, six. Are you coming? Are you following? Stand back. Time. Good. So Kornikova calls it a knockdown. Good start for Elvis Gashi. Did you agree with that, Joe? Well, it's hard to tell, but it connected in the way to Johnny fell back to me. But it wasn't a damaging shot, but it still hit him and went down. Too hard to tell. So a hole to climb out of automatically for Bestati. Big. Still back. think for Bestati, though, he's got to stay patient. Stand back. He can't get too carried away. It's still very early in this fight. And he's got to get that out of his head. It happened, it's over, deal with it. And this is Tajani's first fight with a new camp. He says you're gonna see a lot more use of his kicks and his knees than we have in the past few fights. Tajani's got some good boxing combinations as well. There's no doubt who this crowd here in Rotterdam is cheering for. And you can see who's pressuring now. It's Tajani coming forward, controlling the center. 
Yes. The good thing about a championship fight when you get knocked down in the first round, you got four rounds left as opposed to two. Just misses for Gashi as Tajani again tries to put the pressure on the American. Ooh, nice eyes from Tajani. There has never been a male glory world champion. Gashi can change that tonight. He's off to a good start with a knockdown here in the first round. Walk-in left hand there for Gashi. Yep, looking to set that bomb up. Switching to Orthogos stance right at the bell, and that will do it. So seemingly a 10-8 round for Gashi. Yeah, it was a tough start here, but let's see the connection here. It's while he was kicking, and he was off balance, so this way I think would be a better angle for us to take a look at. It did touch him when he was kicking. It does have to be a, a, you know, a damaging shot. That was a, a very tough call. But hey, it connected the way he fell down. I don't blame the referee for that call. If I was to Johnny, would I be upset? Absolutely, 100%. All right, now let's take a look at uh, some of my keys for this belt. I think it's a very close matchup so far, but the thing is, to Johnny, he's the one pressuring, but uh, I think it's gonna have to adapt. I think eventually Elvis might come forward, but he needs to continue to use that reach. Where Gashi's gotta still try to find that power. He's not cutting the ring off, he's fighting backwards now, but I think as the fight goes on, we'll see him come forward. Fight. So round two, scheduled for five. Lightweight championship on the line. Jab to the stomach. Left hand just misses. And yes, a 10-8 round across the board for Gashi. And you can hear the corner of Gashi asking for that pressure. Would you like to see Bastadi more active, especially when they're at range like this? Well, on the range, if, if I was into Johnny's corner, was, I'd be asking for feints. I, I want him to feint before he attacks. Every time you fight a, a, a power fighter, you want to get him to flinch, to shell up. So feinting for Tajani before he attacks would be nice. Good left jab from Bastadi. Right, that left hook connects. A lot of early Tajani fights, he was knocking everybody out with some good knees. So maybe if he flies some knees up the middle, that could be a good strike for him as well. Break. Stand back. Stand back. As Tati switched gyms after his last loss, bounced back with it over Michael Palandre. Now heading into his. Third title shot against Gashi. Break. Yep, there's those knees, what I tell you. And now Gashi backing up against the ropes. That affected him. Yep. This crowd senses it. Another kick to the body from Estani. Yeah, to Johnny's knees, especially versus this southpaw, they're, they're open right down the middle. And you see that Gashi's leaning in with that left hand to time the right knee would be a, a nice timing for him. Gashi trying to clinch. Tajani having none of it. Now you see Tajani, he knows the knee's there, so he's trying to set it up with his hands. High kick attempt for Gashi. By the way, congratulations to Elvis Gashina's wife, who had twins earlier this year. She's waiting for him in Germany with his children. And they hope to celebrate Stop. a world title. Yeah, Stop. Would be nice. No, after five. Fight. 
Left hand right down the pipe, and another one. Johnny Bestati, nicknamed the Wonder Boy, turned pro at 17 and was signed by Glory at 18. That's how good he was at that early of an age. And now at 23, he seeks his first world title in his third opportunity. Yeah, it's crazy. It's his 14th fight for Glory as well. Where Elvis, nicknamed Super Gashi, signature that left kick. I mean, we've seen it being thrown a lot, but he's really shooting for that left straight in this fight. And I really expected him to come a little bit more forward, but he's adapting well. Sometimes going forward, sometimes moving backwards. And hello to our beautiful Glory girls. There's Bella. Stand back. Good round time. Fight. Johnny's starting to come aggressive with the hands. 10-9 across the board for Bestati. So he needed a bounce back round, and he got it. Gashi being much more aggressive, and he got caught coming inside with a right hand from Bestati. I like the aggression, but I think Gashi's winging them a little too much, leaving his chin too high. He's going to have to set those power shots up, tuck his chin, move his head a little bit more. I mean, with that long reach of Tajani, Stop. keeping your head from moving would be a big Stand mistake. Back. So getting that head off line for Gashi to throw that power, best way for him. Runs in with the left hand. Tajani flips the script and catches him. But now it is Elvis who's trying to apply the pressure. And this is where Elvis wants him, in the corner. You see him kind of switching stances to orthodox. Looks like he wants a power punch from a different angle. Johnny flips the script. Total strikes. Gashi landed at almost a two to one clip. That's Toddy 42 to 23. I like the back leg attacks. Yeah, Bestati, oh. Bestati trying to catch and shoot with that low Thanks. kick. Oh, caught him with the right hand. Gosh, he has to be very Stop. careful against the ropes. Don't throw him, please. Stand up. Kind words Fight. here for the referee. Don't throw him, please. Yeah, I like Elvis attacking that back leg. Being the shorter fighter to get inside, chop that back leg. As Toddy, I mentioned, used to be with Coliseum Gym. He's now training at Day's Gym in Almir, just outside of Amsterdam. Have you seen a different sort of Bestati since ma making that move? Well, maybe a little bit more with the kicks. Um, he's still always kicked well in the past. Oh, big right hand connects! Seems to be mixing things up really well. Straight right from Bestati. Gashi trying to cover up again. This is where Tajani's dangerous, when he can start playing with his ranges really well. Inside or outside, slipping punches, straight punches. 10 seconds to go here in round three. Another good round from Bistati. Left hook, low kick. Yep. Good old Dutch style combinations. Some good pressure work from Tajani in this round. Saw him come forward, switch his stance, get a, a punch over top. But he's doing some great pressure. And I like that he's keeping Elvis against the ropes, putting his combinations together. He seemed to be calmed down from that early knockdown, starting to pick his shots a little bit more. Ooh. 
but there's that long range. When you can connect that full extension being the taller guy, that's where the damage is. If Bestati did indeed win that third round, Joe, we should be all square heading into round four as we say hello to Stephanie. Stand up. Stand back. Third round. Time. Championship Fight. rounds. Two to go. Both men fighting for the vacant lightweight championship. Swing and a miss for Bestati. Yeah, they're throwing some big punches now. High kick there for Bestati. Who's looking to become the youngest champion in glory history. Judge three giving that 10-8 round for Bestati. I'm not too sure. Is he doing MMA scoring these days? I'm not sure what's happening. Well, what is happening is four judges have it even. As Bestati appears to slowly be picking Gashi apart, Joe. Yeah, it's that slow progression, finding his range. I still feel that it's Gashi needed to set up that left hand a little bit. He's leaning with it a little too much. Gashi's been switching stances as well. He's a natural southpaw. You see him fighting out of orthodox occasionally. Fight! Haven't seen a ton of body work from Gashi either. He's, he wants to seem like he switches stances to box a little bit. He's trying to get inside that long reach. It's not easy. Nice shot to the liver from his tiny left hook. That man is back, Gashi. Yeah, he takes a step backwards. The right arm hanging low to cover up the ribs. Lands the left hand off the ropes, though. Scampers to his right. Not the place he wants to be. That's Tani digging to the body again. He knows he's got him hurt. Stop. Oh. oh stand back. Three, She's two, calling him out. Five. Six. Seven. OK. Are you content? Are yeah. you continuing? Stand. Continue. Fight. This judge taking no prisoners. Well, they got one each now. They were given a, a knockdown each. Gashi still targeting the, le the right side of Gashi's body. Look at the punches landed statistic. Off the charts advantage for Bestati. Yeah, I was totally wrong. I thought, I mean, I thought, you know, Tajani would have stayed outside a little longer, but look at him press. Well, he feels he's has damaged goods in front of him. Stop! Stand back. Fighter, stand back. Fight! Stop! Time is over. So that will do it for round four as we get ready to take a look for that knockdown, which really wasn't a knockdown either way. I assume she felt he was asking for a standing eight count, which is not legal. I, well, Tajani started doing a fantastic job of mixing levels with his boxing. He came in with that liver shot, and then we'll see the knee come in here. Oh, it's a left hook to the body. As a sorry, a low left hook. It wasn't to the body, Joe. It was to the family jewels. <laughs> and it was to the jewels. So it was Gashi was correct at that point. Well, as you mentioned, he did have his twins, so we're in good shape. <laughs> well, it's all or nothing for Elvis Gashi. He needs a knockdown here in the fifth round. been cocking that left hand back, Joe, but has not really unleashed it. Yeah, I just think he's not setting it up well enough. I feel like a jab, jab, like a double jab overhand to get on the inside would have worked. 
But easier said than done. Left lands there for Gashi, not a ton behind it. He's got to dig deep. Hard to do that when you're eating left hooks. Stop, stop. Yeah. But Gashi's doing the right thing now. He's starting to scrap. He knows that he's got to do something here, so he's coming forward. Let's see how aggressive Bestati is here going for a KO. Again, Gashi put Bestati down in round number one. As Toddy returned the favor, although it didn't appear to be warranted, in round four with a low blow. Nice two punch combo from Gashi. Just not much behind it. Does he have the power left to put Tajani down? Yeah, Tajani keeps getting warned for grabbing that low kick. Don't push. Fight. Fight. A minute left for Gashi to find an answer. It's okay. He keeps complaining to the referee. It's not working. And when Tajani, look at him, when he stays long, uses his punches, kicks on the outside, very difficult to hit. Oh, that split the guard, that knee. Gashi backpedaling. Yeah, those scissor knees from Tajani. He's got a few big knockouts on his record with that. Back to the body, back to the head. He's just beating Gashi around the ring right now. Just keeps touching with punch, kicks, level changing, good range. Gashi just needs to catch and counter one of those kicks, block a kick and just fire some big power punches. He's got 15 seconds to find a miracle. Will they call that a knockdown? No. And for those back leg, gosh, he's got a punch before he kicks, but here he goes. And that will do it to Johnny Bestati appears to have gotten the job done is the Wonder Boy at age 23 the youngest glory champion of all time. Let's take a look at these highlights. We saw early power. We got that knockdown early from Gashi. Found that nice left hand that he's known for, but Tajani had to start picking things up a little bit. He became the aggressor, pushing the more powerful fighter back. But Gashi had some good moments coming forward, but ultimately Tajani was able to keep his range, get some good long snapping punches. It was all about distance control and level changes. Here he ripped that body, went back upstairs. That was the low blow with that left hook. And then fifth round, it was just a nice little clinic from Tajani, mixing up strikes, kicks, scissor knees, good power left hooks. Great performance from Tajani. Here are the final numbers from tonight's lightweight world title bout. And it all tilts in favor of the Moroccan. 110 total strikes landed out of 242. Just 37 of 205 for Super Gashi. And then when you look at the zone, I mean, Tajani was just mixing really well. The advantage was to the head, but got a knockdown, you know, mixing up the bodies, got good leg attacks. So great job mixing things up. We now go into the ring. Tim Hughes. Ladies and decision. gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the totals. One judge sees it 48 44. The remaining judges all have it 48 45. A unanimous decision, all for your winner and new lightweight champion of the world, Tijani Bastani. Yeah. Here to present the belt. 
head of Glory Talent Operations, Robbie Timmers. Joe, you won your first world title. How were you feeling when you got the job done? Well, I was a little concussed when it happened, but uh, I was very emotional. I went back to the, the room and I just bawled my eyes out. So he'll have some nice emotional moments. And here he is now with Mark Schaff. Dijani, you are the new lightweight champion of the world. How does that belt around your waist feel? Oh, man. This, this, this has been a hell of a ride. First of all, this was not, this was not my best performance because I was one and a half year out of the ring. And I want to say, this belt is for my mother. She... No, wait, 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 wait. You know, this training camp was a, was a tough one. My mother, uh, uh, she, uh, she just beat cancer. So, uh, you know, the, the training sessions were to the hospital, to the training, to the hospital, to the training. So, my mother, she's also here. This one is for you, Ma. This one is for you. This training camp was tough, you know, it was tough. But uh, I did this for her. Did you have a hard time emotionally? Because you got eight counts in the first round. Th there was not an eight count. I felt nothing. I felt absolutely nothing, you know? It was just a slip, but it is what it is. You, see, you, see, you saw my father hard, my mentality, I just came back and just took the title with me. Now, th there was a low blow in the fourth round. You were demolishing his body. Yeah. Do you think it was a low blow? No, it was not a low blow. I already saw his face when I, when I gave him the body shot, you know? So, but you know, it is what it is. I won, and that's the most important thing. Definitely. Congratulations. Yeah. Give it up for your new glory. I want to thank, thank my team as well. Milton, Rami, Dayon from Day's Gym. You know, it's been a hell of a ride. And uh, I will see you guys soon. I appreciate all the love and support. Timo Maghreb, Hoos. Hoos. An emotional Tajani Benztani dedicates this performance to his mother who's been suffering from cancer. Congratulations to the 23-year-old world champion. Speaking of world champion, someone will be leaving Rotterdam with the middleweight title around the race. Will it be Yusri Belgarwi or Donovan Visa? That title fight is next. Brazil defending his light heavyweight championship of the world later tonight in a rematch, a highly anticipated one with Artem Vahitov. And this is the man people came to see, the baddest, Badr Hari. Yeah, and I mean, like we said, humble all week until yesterday. So we're going to see what Badr shows up to the ring. And now we get set for the middleweight championship of the world brought to you by Jack's Casino. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Very focused. Uh, it doesn't matter if you talk trash or not. Uh, in the ring, we're going to see who's boss. No, I don't, I don't think he's trying to intimidate me. I think he's trying to um, help himself believe um, that he's going to be the champion. To add my name on the list as a champion. It's going to be a great honor, a great feeling. Uh, there are a lot of theories about that, like speaking it out loud, uh, dress like a champion, feel like a champion, I don't know, fake it till you make it even. <laughs> I don't know what you see is thinking, but from my part, uh, it's going to be a whole different fight. Yeah, I know all those things don't work. You're going to see it as on Saturday, man. Uh, it's going to be an awesome fight, with high pace, technical fight, I think, from my side then. I think that my, my, my skill level is so much higher that I will completely dominate the fight. I'm calm, but inside, um, I'm very excited uh, to show you guys. Oh! A unanimous decision, all for your winner. The Assyrian's fight is Donovan Peace. 
Ladies and gentlemen, for your featured super fight of the evening, five rounds for the interim middleweight championship of the world, Yusri Belgari and Donovan Visa. carries a two-fight win streak into the ring, including a second-round TKO in Utrecht at Glory 75. Here comes Yusri Belgari. It sounded like Phil Collins, but it's actually Yusri Belgari rapping along to a Phil Collins song. He is multi-talented, but his first love, obviously, is kickboxing, Joe. And tonight, he has the opportunity of a lifetime. And when you meet him in person, you just realize how big he is for a middleweight. He's tall, he's rangy, and he just seems huge. So that type of reach and length gives him a good advantage in this ring. He's got a lot of good power, but there's a lot of new energy to him. He's with a new team. He feels re-energized. And this is his third title opportunity. So for him, this means a lot. It means everything to him to kind of get this win and this revenge. His first two title opportunities came against Alex Pereira, who no one seems to be able to beat. He's won nine straight fights, but he does have a, a very impressive win over Jason Wilness. And he's won two in a row, Joe. Yeah, and I'm telling you, he just continually gets better. And he said last time he fought Visa, he wasn't really himself. He was trying to be a different character, trying to get in Visa's head. But he says in this fight, it's all about him performing his best. And that means being relaxed, being calm, and just being himself. This is his 13th fight in glory, his third opportunity at a world title. Not one to shy away from the ultimate challenge. He puts his five and one glory record on the line for a shot at the title. Here is Donovan Visa. Donovan Visa. His nickname is the Dream Chaser, Joe, but tonight his dream can be 
reality. If he wins the middleweight championship of the world, it's the moment he's been fighting his whole life for, and now it is right in front of him. Yeah, and he's so calm and collected, but he knows what's on the line here. And for him, it's really wanting to represent Holland and Suriname. I mean, we talk about the list of amazing fighters from Suriname, and he wants to put his name as one of those world champions from that country. 15 wins, only one loss, eight coming by way of KO. This is the opportunity he has been waiting for. Can he get the job done against a man he's already beaten once? This is our tail of the tape for the middleweight championship of the world. As expected, Yusri Belgari with a height and reach advantage, but last time, he couldn't exploit it as Donovan Visa won by decision. Visa the favorite tonight here in Rotterdam. Professional experience, the edge going to Yusri Belgari with 34 fights to 16. Both gentlemen with over 50% of their wins by knockout. Tonight's scoring based on the following prioritized criteria, started with knockdowns, followed by damage, followed by clean scoring strikes with an emphasis on spectacular techniques, followed by normal scoring techniques. Finally, if there's no clear advantage, judges look for aggression. We do have open scoring tonight. Five judges will score it based on the 10-point must system. Additional points are deducted for knockdowns or rule violations. Tim Hughes now with our introductions. The first meeting between these two was an all-out war. This time, the prize is glory gold and the middleweight championship of the world. A rematch, two years in the making, between the top two ranked fighters in the division. This bout sanctioned by the Fight Sports Organization of the Netherlands, the man in charge of this championship bout, your referee, Edward Stryker. From New England to the Netherlands, Glory fighting fans are watching around the world. It's time for glory. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. He became a contender tournament champion with two wins in one night at Glory 40. His professional record, 27 wins with six losses. 14 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He stands six feet five inches tall, 1.96 meters, and he weighed in at 187.2 pounds, 84.9 kilograms. Fighting tonight out of Tunisia, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Yusri Belgari. Here now is his opponent fighting out of the white corner. He had a successful debut at Glory 59 Amsterdam and comes in on a four-fight winning streak. As a professional, impressive. 15 wins with just one loss. Eight of those wins coming by way of knockout. He stands six feet two inches tall, 1.88 meters, and officially weighed in at 186.7 pounds, 84.7 kilograms. Fighting out of Suriname, ladies and gentlemen, here is Donovan, the Dream Chaser, Visa! And once again, your referee in charge, Edward Stryker. Okay, guys, listen, you know the rules, yeah? Protect yourselves at all times, yeah? Okay, touch gloves if you want. Back to your corner. Last time, Belgori tried to intimidate Donovan Visa. Mean mug him, stare him down. It didn't work then. A much more friendly Belgari tonight, at least until the bell rings. Scheduled what? for five for the middleweight championship of the world. You're going to see some good Dutch-style kickboxing from Visa, which means good forward pressure, punch-to-kick combinations, where U3 a little bit better with his range, using that length. You saw a good, solid low kick there for Visa on those long legs of Belgarwi. Yeah, and Visa's got some big, powerful legs, so expect hard low kicks. And that was the first fight. Low kicks ultimately set up a head kick from Visa, which gave him a knockdown. 
So expect level changing from Visa, good body work as well. What was the key to victory for Visa in their first fight, Joe? Well, it was level changing. The way he attacked the legs and then punched the body to went upstairs. And the other thing you're going to see with Visa, he's got good head movement. So he uses his high guard shell, and then he'll rip his head and go to the body. He sets it up. He does it a lot. Visa keeps checking the kicks. Like Belgari, while Belgari just lets Visa kick away. Like that. A strong kickboxer is going to block them. You got to lift that, that lead leg up to block that kick. I always say turn those toes on a 45 degree angle. This way you can block properly. Visa trying to push the tempo. Yeah, Belgari's trying to find those jabs. Break! Step back! He said with the new team, Fight. now he's going to try to find his kicks and knees again. Well, he has some of the most damaging knees in all of war. Yes. Big time. With his length and the way he can set them up with his hands, but Visa's power is something else. That left hook just missing yeah. for Donovan Visa. It's that head movement, man. He just subtly moves his head when you don't expect it and just comes with big punches. See? There he goes. Waiting, setting it up. He likes that head to the left, left hook. Yep, he's waiting for it. There it goes. Break! Working the body now is Visa. Fight! who was born and raised in the former Dutch colony of Suriname in South America, the same place Tyrone Spong was born. Unlike many kickboxers, Visa said, hey, man, my childhood was great. But I just loved kickboxing. I loved the sport. I loved watching it. The Dutch connection obviously helped. Break! I just fell in love Break. with it. Listen. And a shot there late from Belgarwi. You can definitely tell Belgari likes that jab first, but... I think he's got to change it up. It's become a little too predictable, and Visa's trying to time it. 